the Secretary General of the Office of Education Council, um, uh, Dr. Uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the Office of Education Council, Dr. Jiapan Nagase. Uh, he said the uh, State British Ambassador is Mr. Mackent, um, Deputy Director of British Council of um, Thailand, Mr. Duncan Wilson, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to give a talk today uh, in the Thailand's forums of the creative economy with focus on education. Creative economy and education issues are, to me, um, the most important issues for human development in Thailand right now. So my talk today will hopefully give you uh, some understanding of Thailand's situations and its challenges with regards to the future transformations to the creative economy that policy makers and people in academia like me dream of. So let me give you a hint, give, uh, let me give you a hint of you. So Thailand's future is not so bright in my heart view, so if we don't do anything now. So um, I have, I was asked to present about one hour, but actually we are pretty much late. So I may not present on, on all of that time. So let, let me begin uh, with the topics of linking Thailand's economy with the creative by focusing the role of education and asking challenges. Um, so far, we're talking about the stage of development so far, because now the countries like Thailand has been quite received quite successful economic growth for moving um, step forward to from out of the factor-driven economies, which is the countries that rely on the low-cost inputs, to the in investment-driven economies, which is the countries that rely more on. As we can see that um, Thailand is down here, which is about this level for over 50 years. Comparing to other Asian countries in, in Asia, successful Asian in, in Asia, like Singapore, Hong Kong, Chinese Taipei, or even Korea, South Korea, that can be able to escape out of uh, the real contract. So the question will be how, what does it happen, and why, why Thailand GDP is pretty much stagnant over the past few years. So this can be the growth boost of Thailand. If I just map out just with some countries, so we will not consider about OECDs, we will consider about Japan, let's say just only Korea, Taiwan, Brazil, which can be able to jump out of the middle income traps and compared to Thailand. And if you look at the economic structures of those countries, you can see that the countries like Chinese Taipei, Brazil, and Korea has the larger shares of service sectors. It has a have larger share of our service sector, which is the key of another development. While the service sector in Thailand is pretty much constant, they stay about 50% of the Thailand GDP over, um, since the 1970s. And the those countries And those country also have the lower shares of um, uh, manufacturing sectors, <coughs> low skill manufacturing sectors. While the low, low skill manufacturing factor share in Thailand is increasing. So that means that Thailand still pretty much relying on the low skill productions. Use is pretty much a labor intensive in manufacturing productions. So, so far we can see that um, even though Thailand has quite um, shown a success in terms of the economic development, but uh, they still need to transition, to make transition to the high income status. Besides, the country also faced aging societies and low fertility rate which is another obstacle to Thailand to face labor shortage. Another challenge also comes from the ABC, the ASEAN Economic Communities, which is a big challenge to, to Thailand to open the opportunities for countries. But even anyway, since the country have low labor force uh, and low fertility rate, so this is a sector, that's why this sector we need to rely more on efficient productions and also rely more on the service sectors. And that's why we talk about knowledge the economy and the creative economy. Even though the countries like Thailand has pretty much been able to sustain quite an impressive growth during the past 25 years, the states, compared to um, international standards. But if we look at the growth by growth basis since the year 2009, we can see that the growth in Thailand has been slowing since the year 2009. I, I don't want to talk about the reasons. Well, it can be internal factors like political instability, pressure, negotiations, which is really not, not in this room. And also, it can be external factors like you know, 
global economic crisis. But in a way, we found that the okay, growth in Thailand has been uh, declining since, since then. The competitiveness ranking, you know, it would be creating the economic index or those based uh, uh, competitiveness, world competitiveness index has been falling as well. So we know that if we have to rely on the fact of production, which is rely on much more the, the, the cheap labors, and we know resources are much diminishing, and the countries would need to move toward the more efficient productions. In the theories, if it aren't in the role of countries, in the theories, we we pretty much agree that Thailand should adopt a growth strategies that are we would call inclusive growth strategies. The inclusive is a kind of benefit that is created. So the upper upper picture is that this is like experiment, and upper picture is what service liberalizations promoting the service flows across the countries, capital liberalizations and the labor liberalizations. If we talk about creative economies, well, all of them are, have to be getting involved in that, especially the labor liberalizations, especially the free fall of skilled laborers. The questions will be, what will be the positions for business firm under AAC, under creative economies? Well, it's difficult to say, and you can see there are so many, many uh, 